Everyone wants to know when the pandemic will end. Is it over? Let's get into it. Welcome to The Feed with Dr. G. There were only ever gonna be one of two ways this pandemic would end. Either the virus would die off and leave us alone or it would become a permanent part of our lives. And it doesn't look like it's going anywhere so that pretty much leaves us with option B. So how do we get our normal lives back if the virus is here to stay? Well, a lot of places are kind of acting like the virus isn't even a thing anymore. In the UK, they've barely had any restrictions for months now. In the US, some states are actually going as far as to fine schools for requiring masks. Shocking. And now there's talk of getting rid of vaccine passports and even mask requirements all over Canada. For some people, it's all happening too fast, and for others, it's never fast enough. But in the end, we'll just have to find a balance that's reasonable for most people. And there are three things that'll help us to find that balance. Number one, how many people are actively getting sick from the virus and the kind of pressure that's putting on our hospitals. Number two, how much immunity people have, and particularly how well protected we are from severe infection. And number three, what kinds of treatments we now have for the virus. So number one, how's our health system holding up? We're in our fifth wave, but we're clearly on the downswing. We saw a lot of cases, a lot of people got sick, but now our hospitals and our ICUs are getting less full because we have good immunity through vaccines. Which brings us to number two, how is our population immunity? Well, a lot of people are vaccinated. Now, we have the Omicron variant, which means that people now need three shots to get a good level of protection, so we do need more people to go out and get that booster shot. But also partly because Omicron is so contagious, millions more people have now been infected and have some natural immunity. Number three, what about treatments? Great news here too. If you have a mild infection, we now have these amazing medications that dramatically reduce your chances of getting really sick and needing hospital. Now, we do need more supply of those medicines, but that's coming. So on all three points, we're doing really well. And as we head towards the summer, which is when we know infections tend to go down anyways, it might really start feeling like the pandemic is behind us. Now, I don't want to rain on that parade, but there is one problem. All the positive things we've talked about apply to the rich countries in the world, but not so much the poor countries. And the biggest one is access to vaccines. In rich countries, 73% of people are fully vaccinated, while in poor countries, less than 11% have gotten even a single dose. So if you're in a rich country, why is that your problem? Because the more unvaccinated people there are in the world, the more infections there are. And with each new person who gets infected, the virus makes over 100 billion copies of itself. And each time it makes a copy, it has an opportunity to mutate. And that's how we get new variants. And as we've seen, those new variants eventually find their way into every single country in the world. So we may be doing really well right now, but we're not safe until everyone's safe. So is the pandemic over? Unless you have a crystal ball, nobody really knows because there's still that risk of another major variant. So let's hope we can figure out how to share vaccines to get the whole world vaccinated. Until then, keep an eye on where this pandemic is headed and just be willing to adapt accordingly. For now, I'm gonna celebrate the fact that we're in a much better place than we were two years ago. And while we're in this place, take that opportunity to get back to some of those things that many of us have missed out on, like spending time with friends and family, getting back to the gym and even traveling. So thanks for watching, be safe out there, and I'll see you next time on The Feed.